In a world full of beasts, birds, monsters, and humans coexisting, dragons are considered the mighty above all. The dragons are considered mighty because of their vast wings that can hold wind, claws that can pierce anything, and fiery breath that can turn anything into ashes. But not all of them. A small dragon gets yelled at by his father, calling him an idiot. Two slimy monsters are looking for a new house to buy and comes to a cave. The male slime is astounded by the architecture inside the cave and with three baths. He goes through inside a hole to see a massive space, where the female slime says she could put her mana stones on display. He loves the cave and thinks it would be great to start a family. An elf appears and asks them if they like the place. The slime says he loved it. The elf says the cave is under the camouflage spell of its previous owner, so the entrance of the cave will be hidden for another two years. This news excites them, and they want to buy it immediately. The elf proprietor explains that the new house has hero detector traps and an emergency escape route. The slime says if he was a dragon, they didn't have to worry about getting a house, and laughs on it with his wife. The elf says not all dragons. Somewhere, a red dragon says to himself that he can't believe he got disowned. He was supposed to look after their egg, and he dozed off, letting the hunters take away the egg and feast on it. This makes his father angry, who yells at him for being careless, calling him a disgrace, while other dragons laugh at him. His father shouts that if he truly wants to be his son, he has to live on his own. He is alone in a desert, shouts for help, and then wonders if any hunter is around, they would cook and eat him. He is pretty sure he can't survive. He looks at his card to see how many points he has got. He has mostly average to bad scores in everything except for the luck part, where he has minus 7 points. He is pretty sure that soon he will be turned into a gift for a kid. He plans to get a place for himself to hide, and strikes with an idea. He remembers the tale of three little trolls. The trolls were very weak, so they together made an impenetrable fortress for themselves, and lived happily in no vain. The red dragon has decided he needs a safe house like that to stay alive. Now he goes on a search to find himself a new home. Somewhere in an inn, a group of dwarves brings a cage. The cage has the red dragon in captivity. Everyone is delighted to see the dragon as the dragon wonders how he ended up there. He remembers that all he did was politely ask them if they could build him a house. Thirty minutes earlier, the dragon asked a guard if it was the dwarven city. The guard pulls up their defense, shouting that the dragon has come for their golds. And now he is captive. The dwarf asks their boss what they should do with the dragon, he says, to everyone's delight, to get ready for vivisection. The dragon pleads to him, saying all he asked was to build him a house. Because he has heard dwarves are good at building houses, he cries that he wants to go home. The dwarves are stunned seeing him crying, and say they would build him a house. But in return they would need his claws to make dragon mats. The dragon agrees, but the dwarf goes on to ask for his horns, his tails, his wings, maybe his heart too. Then they would make him a resting place. He needs a plan to escape, and to distract everyone says to look away as someone is stealing their golds. As they look away, he escapes with dwarves chasing him. But he somehow manages to survive and starts crying, but he hears a beautiful voice asking him to stop crying. He looks up to see two harpies come to him asking him why he is worried. The harpies ask him to stay with them. The harpies ask him to fly up to their nest. But he says he hasn't unlocked his power to fly. They teach him how to fly, to jump and flap his wings. He obeys them and makes a jump, but falls on his face. The harpies start laughing at him. They tell him to go to the valley beyond, where goblins are staying in a large oak tree. But he ends up with chains hanging upside down. The goblins are very happy that they can have dragon meat now. He begs not to eat him, and the goblin asks him what he is doing there. The dragon explains that the harpies sent him to them. The goblin, infatuated with the harpies, lets the dragon loose. The goblins now ask him what he needs, and after listening to his story, the goblin says his big body won't fit into the small goblin's houses, so ask him to look somewhere else. The dragon comes across a fish who asks him if he could stay with them, if he likes the location. He dips into the sea, and soon he comes out, running out of his air. The fish suggests heading east to a forest. There, he will find an architect named Diaria. He thanks him and heads east. He is walking in the forest, looking for Diaria. Soon someone shouts they got a dragon, as he wonders if the hunters might have seen him. A boy appears, gives a boastful speech and raises his sword against the dragon. The dragon asks them where's the camera. They assure him that it isn't a reality show as they are heroes. The dragon says it's corny that they call themselves heroes. They say frustratingly that it's their job title and rush towards him to attack. But the dragon just slowly dodges the attack. The hero says he shouldn't dodge his attack, 
but the dragon replies that he doesn't want to fight them anyway. The dragon calls for help as someone approaches. He uses his magic to save the dragon from the bullies, turning them into ashes as the dragon is awestruck. The elf asks him what he wants, and he says all he needs is a home. The dragon sees a house and loves it. As soon as he opens the door, the dwarves are waiting for him and draw their swords. He cries for help and wakes up from his nightmare. The elf is still beside him and introduces himself as Diaria and the dragon says his name is Letty. Diaria gives him his card which says he is a real estate agent and a demon lord. He asks Letty how he would like his house and the dragon says he wants a cozy cottage. But Diaria lets him know that he won't fit inside a cottage. He needs a house that is safe from the heroes. The word hero frightens the dragon again, as Diaria explains that hunters only go after non-human but heroes are more bloodthirsty and don't have any morale. He takes Letty on a house hunting tour. He casts a spell below them, which teleports them in front of a huge castle. The dragon isn't sure if the house is too big for him, but the elf says he does need a big place to accommodate himself. As they are walking inside the castle, the dragon falls into a trap before the elf can warn him. Diaria says that the house is filled with traps for invaders and asks Letty to follow him to the dungeon, much to his dismay. He, on his way to the dungeon, faces multiple traps. Finally, they reach the bottom of the castle, where the elf shows him a healing pool. He goes inside and learns that anything other than humans would be flushed. He is flushed inside the pool, but he revives again in front of the elf. The elf says now they must head above, and the dragon slowly crawls up the walls. But as they are climbing, some heroes spot them and try to attack them. The elf intervenes to stop them. They don't listen to him and attack him, but they fail. The elf, with his magic, attacks them, unknown to the dragon. The dragon finally reaches above the castle as the elf asks him if he would buy the castle. He says a house with so many traps won't be suitable for him. They are back in the forest, where the dragon says his muscles are sore and he can't go see another house with traps. The elf says the next house is perfect for him. Heroes don't go near it, and he won't feel lonely there. The dragon is excited and is brought to the house, which turns out to be a haunted mansion. The dragon is scared by the looks and tries to move away, but the elf drags him by his tail, asking him to take a look. They go inside the house, and the dragon is freaked out. The elf says that exorcism won't work in this house, and they will rest for the night there. The elf leaves Letty alone in his room. As Letty goes near the door to ask him to sleep with him, he sees a hand coming out of the door, frightening him but it belongs to Diarius, as he is giving him some healing injections. The dragon has wrapped himself in a blanket. He hears something drop. He sees a painting fall, and to his horror, he sees a boy ghost behind it. He frighteningly comes outside his room, and sees no room beside him. He goes on to search for Diaria in the dark and encounters another ghost who hands him over a torch. He steps on blood and turns around to see a bunch of ghosts. He moves inside the room in front of him, encounters some more ghosts, and faints. He wakes up to see that he is surrounded by ghosts. He faints again. The head of ghosts tells Diaria that he never thought a dragon would be so delicate. They were just welcoming him. The elf introduces the ghost of the owner to the dragon, as all the ghosts were welcoming their new guest. The dragon says a gift basket would have been nice. The elf says the ghost often keeps an eye on any invaders, which is great security, and no one comes inside the house says the artifacts are useless. The dragon says he wants to relax with no dead people around disappointing the ghosts. The dragon bids farewell to the owner of the house. At night, they sleep in the jungle, but Letty is still scared after his encounter with the ghosts. The next day they plan on visiting another house, but the elf suggests they take a detour to a place called the Crone's Lair. The dragon is horrified by the name, but the elf says he needs to go there to return the bed he got for the dragon in the haunted house. He shows him a tiny sachet where he is keeping the bed. They reach a cave and move inside. Inside the cave, the dragon is greeted by three creepy-looking old ladies. They show their products to them, astonishing Letty. He tries a magic knob which takes him to the bar full of dwarfs. The three ladies show him a portrait of a beautiful lady, who talks. The dragon is excited to meet her as the elf says there's a time limit to it. The portrait starts reading a poem written by Letty, embarrassing him. He sees a small cage inside which is a very small dragon who is serving a jail sentence by being a lantern. He likes a fireplace and wants to buy it but that would cost him a hundred tons. The elf says if he could build a house from the start, he could have his own fireplace. The elf says he has a perfect spot to build a house. He is taken above a cliff which he loves, but wonders if he could afford building one. The elf says he could sell his organ, frightening him. 
but the elf says he is joking and asks him how much money he has. He brings out his baby teeth which the elf says would get him some money, but asks him not to worry about money. Elf brings out a housing plan and calls gnomes and ogres to start the construction. The dragon says if he could help anyway, but he is poor at heavy lifting or has any special skills. Diaria asks him to help the gnomes in painting, but the gnomes are infuriated at his callousness and attack him. Letty is disheartened, but Diaria gives him a task to mix the mold. Days go by as the construction is still going on. With a fireplace and the portrait of the lady, the construction is done, much to Letty's delight. He thanks everyone for their help. The elf says now they need to wait for the heroes, stunning the dragon. Diaria explains he would sell equipment of the fallen heroes to cover up the cost, worrying the dragon. Diaria says he already has a team ready, who will also be a security and would take 50% of what they make out of the equipment. Diaria leaves, saying he will come visit him often. As Letty is relaxing in his bath, the same heroes from before have arrived to attack. As they enter the house, the security team beats him causing damage inside the house. They leave crying as the team is happy to work under a dragon. The next day, some Lilliputs have come to ask for help as he is now famous as Flame Dragon Lord who defeated the heroes. More helpless monsters take refuge at his house as the team beats more heroes. His reputation spreads as his house makes it to the newspaper. Diaria sees the paper and comes to visit Letty. Letty says that he is being nice to helpless ones, but being called Dragon Lord is a pressure on him and heroes would start to raid his house often. The elf says they have to find another house for them. The dragon takes his belongings and leaves his house. They are now above snowy mountains where Letty is freezing with cold. Letty asks Diaria what they are doing there, as he replies this could be a good spot for his new house away from anybody. He hands Letty a shovel and asks him to gather snow and make him an igloo. Diaria gives him instructions on how to make an igloo as he follows them, and completes the igloo. But Diaria says, as now he is isolated from the marketplace, he has to get his own food supply. He leaves saying that he would visit him soon, leaving the dragon alone. Letty goes to a nearby forest and brings some plants for himself as he sees three reindeers and wonders if he could catch them he could cook and eat them. But instead of catching them he is chased by those three reindeers. He sheaths to pulse and slowly approaches towards them, but his legs get stuck on the thin ice, and the wolves put some more ice on him, covering him. He gets out and heads home, but he loses his way due to snow. Something approaches behind him, and he sees an yeti behind him. He tries to run away, but the yeti instead invites him inside his igloo. He goes inside to find Diaria who is cooking, the dwarves and heroes are partying, and the igloo starts to melt to his horror. He shouts for help and opens his eyes to see he is still stuck on the thin ice, having a nightmare. He is hungry and finds an egg, wondering if it's tasty or not. But stealing an egg would make him just like those hunters who stole his egg, so he decides to protect it, but realizes the ice broker and he is floating adrift on an ice floe. He spends an entire day on the ice floe as he can't swim and attempts to eat the egg, but somehow stops himself. Suddenly a large whale sneaks up on him and swallows him whole. He wakes up to find himself greeted by a pale man. He asks if he's alright and introduces himself as Davy Jones. Letty realizes he is inside the whale's stomach and starts panicking, but Jones asks him to calm down. He takes him inside a room, which belongs to Jones, as Letty is amazed by his living conditions. Jones explains that their heroes won't harm him, and he has enough supply to survive inside the whale. He asks if Letty would live with him too, but he denies saying he needs to return the egg to its parents. The next morning, Jones makes him breakfast and makes a plan for letting him escape, which is by making the whale sneeze. He throws barrels of pepper inside the whale, causing him to sneeze and Letty escapes through the blowhole, but lands on the ice floe again. He is floating again, as he sees a cute seal. He couldn't eat it because of how cute it is and cried. The seal turns out to be Diaria in disguise, who thought putting Letty under harsh conditions would bring out the dragon instincts in him, but that didn't help. He takes Letty back in his igloo and makes him a hot soup. He notices the egg and asks him why he is carrying it, as Letty snatches the egg away from him, says he wants to return it to its parents. The egg hatches and they see a chick inside it, who starts calling Letty Papa. The duo now reaches a new sunny place. Letty says he likes the warm weather rather than staying in the igloo. Diaria goes through some property clauses and says they need a bachelor tenant, which Letty isn't anymore as the freshly hatched chick calls Letty Papa much to his annoyance. Diaria gives him flowers to celebrate his first birth, and asks the child what kind of place he wants to live with his papa. Letty angrily asks him to stop calling him his papa, 
but he explains that newborn children are attached to the person they see first. Letty takes the chick in his hand and says if he could raise it. Diaria goes on to tell a story about an explorer who came across a newly hatched bird baby who followed him everywhere and the explorer raised it. The dragon likes the story until Diaria continues his story that when the explorer died, the baby didn't know the basic concept of death sat by his side still calling for her father, which scares Letty even more. Diaria says the baby is a Hraesvelger chick, confusing Letty. He explains that those breeds of snow eagles stay in the north. All the chick needs is snow to survive. Diaria takes Letty to a housing community where he plans to leave the chick with a good surrogate family. Letty is excited to see the housing community. They see two tenants chased by some heroes, until their landlords come to their rescue. The hero's team who frequently attacks them arrives there too, but the landlord beats them too. They visit a two-headed wolf, who formally denied their request to adopt the chick. They meet another candidate who ends up fighting among themselves. They visit another candidate, who says he has enough children already. His children love the chick, but their aggressive love scares Letty, and he leaves with the chick. They move to another candidate who is a gym freak and puts chick on a running mill. Letty runs away with the chick. Letty wonders if leaving the egg would have been better, but Diaria assures him that he instead saved the egg. Diaria suggests that Letty raise the little one himself, because he is much more caring about the chick than anyone else. A bugbear arrives and asks Diaria to come with him to look into his house for renovation. As the bugbear's cubs talk to Diaria, an aggressive catablepus comes there, threatening to eat the chick if he doesn't want it, but he denies it. The catablepus asks one of the bear cubs to eat, but they turn towards Letty to help them. Letty feels helpless, but assures himself that he can save the kids and warns the catablepus that he would turn him into ashes. He finally breathes fire, but it burns his own mouth. The catablepus look confused as Diaria arrives and says he is the famous flame dragon lord, scaring the catablepus as he runs away. Diaria says to Letty that he risked his life to save the kids, which makes him a great father. He thanks him and finally adopts the chick and names him Pip. Letty is broke due to having to care for Pip to bring snow and food. Diaria suggests he should take up a job and get his own assets. Letty reluctantly agrees, but wonders if anyone will hire a dragon. But Diaria says the market is a huge place to get him a job, conjures a magic and teleports them to a marketplace. They see many merchants selling many products. He tries to escape, but Diaria grabs him by his tail. Letty is scared that all kinds of wrong persons are in the marketplace, but Diaria shows him a jail saying that anyone who is caught doing anything wrong is put inside it, mostly filled with heroes. They visit an owl, who says he can't give him a job without a letter of recommendation. But the chick starts chirping loudly. Letty asks him to keep quiet, but the owl understands its language, says he can make an exception. Diaria requests him to give Letty a simple task to begin with. He is tasked with cutting the woods into smaller blocks, which he thinks he can manage. He makes some blocks and gets paid with only one coin. Al says the work is shoddy and gives him another job to get paid well. He is given hotel reception duties, but due to his appearance the guests are scared and they run away. Letty breaks down crying, asking for another job. Diaria says to try something else, like a proxy service suiting his nature as a dragon. He meets his new client, who is delighted to see him, and asks him to act with him. The kid faces some boys, as he acts like he summoned the dragon, but the boys remain unmoved. The chick instead uses its power to scare the kids, fainting them. He earned a lot of money from the proxy service. He does the service again, this time for a client who wants to use his new weapons on him. Letty is scared but is tied to a stand as Diaria leaves him, secretly with a protection spell. He, while sitting in the marketplace, encounters Lilith, a succubus and an old friend of his. She asks his whereabouts and says that he has changed from the last time she has seen him as a demon lord. He remembers it as an unlucky day when he became the new Dark Lord. He doesn't want the title, but is forced to have it. That's the day he met Lilith who says he will have a future with great fortune. He admired his new castle and magic runes and accidentally made his people fall into the traps. He leaves his palace and has been on a journey ever since. The Dark Lord doesn't have a purpose after the peace treaty. He hears Letty scream and bids goodbye to Lilith. The new client pays him well and Diaria is off buying supplies for their journey. Letty is cleaning himself up, but suddenly a man asks him to look into a map to help him out. Diaria remembers what Lilith told him before leaving, the humans might attack the dragon with him. Letty, meanwhile, is captured and lured into a cage. Letty and Pip are kept captive as the guards call them their merchandise, which terrifies Letty, and he cries for help. Pip shows him how to cut the wooden bars to escape, 
but he says he can't do that. There he meets Aroba, another prisoner as he shows that the doors were locked all the time. Aroba takes him to a prison where he introduces Letty to other captive monsters, and himself as Steve. Steve explains that the dungeon is a fighting arena for someone they call Margrave. They live comfortably, with every kind of facility provided and without the hassle of the heroes. They hear a bell tong and get ready for their gladiator fight. Letty still doesn't understand and sees himself pitted against the skeleton monsters in an arena full of audience members. The skeleton chases him in the arena, but with a whip of his tail, he dismembers their bodies, winning the fight. He comes back to his prison, apologizes to the skeletons, but they say they didn't mind at all, and learns from Steve that everything in the arena is scripted for the audience's entertainment. Letty soon finds out Pip is missing, but finds him in ice-cold water. Letty learns to coexist and wonders where Diaria is, who is chilling in an inn. Days pass by, and Letty is still counting on Diaria to save him. Soon they learn that Margrave has died and that the new owner, his oldest son, has decided to kill all the monster gladiators. The new owner already has his mercenaries ready to kill them. Steve comes up with a plan to distract the mercenaries while the other monsters escape, and he gives Letty the task of distracting them. The mercenaries come and find a puppet instead of monsters and are alarmed. Letty is nervous but does everything according to plan, accidentally knocking out some mercs. Other monsters come to help him with taking out the mercs. But soon they are surrounded by the guards, until Diaria arrives right at the moment and takes out the mercenaries with his magic. Letty thanks Diaria, saying he knew he would come to save him, but Diaria says he wasn't looking for him at all, but came for some other matter, angering Letty. Diaria brings everyone out of the arena, and the guards leave their jobs too to join the monsters. Letty understands that wherever the monsters go, they will always have a home because they are family. Diaria is glad he learned the lesson. Letty asks Diaria if he didn't come for him, why did he actually come? Diaria replies he heard about the new Margrave's crime and came to threaten him. Letty is happy anyway and, with Diaria, gets back on his home hunting journey. Letty, feeling exhausted, says no matter how much he sleeps, he always feels tired. Diaria suggests he should take a nap, but even before he completes his sentence, Letty falls asleep. Pip sees an eagle flying, he becomes restless and chirps. Diaria says he could go and play, but asks him not to fly too far and to stay away from strangers. Pip comes across a leprechaun, who says that they used to live inside a shoe, until it was broken by a hero, leaving them homeless. Pip understands him, and tells him his father is also looking for a home, and he will help him get a new home. The leprechaun asks Pip to find them a new shoe, and Pip sees the heroes who have been hunting his father come to rest. Pip says they are good for nothing and scares them away with caterpillars. The heroes run away, one of them leaving behind his shoe. The leprechauns are happy to get a new home and thanks Pip. Letty, meanwhile, calls out to Pip and cries after he can't find him. But when Pip returns to them, Letty hugs him. He reacts like an overprotective father to him and yells at him for his absence. Diaria, to calm the dragon, tells his own life story. When he was young, he lived on a snowy mountain with berserkers all around. Before he can continue his story, Letty interrupts him asking where the elves come from. Diaria says most of them belong to a village on the branches of Yggdrasil and stayed away from humans for a long time. Letty and Pip are eager to listen to his childhood story. Diaria says that in his childhood, he was always eager to learn more and be more knowledgeable. He one day casts a spell, accidentally, and breaks a branch of Yggdrasil. His father scolds him for being insensitive, but young Diaria says he will use a different spell next time. His father says then he will turn Yggdrasil naked and asks him to stay in the children's quarter and play with them. Diarius says he wants to learn more. So his father sent him to study under Jormungandr, the Great Serpent. He meets Jormungandr, who greets him, as Diarius says the book doesn't have many answers to the questions he is looking for. Jormungandr welcomes him and promises to tutor him. He started learning philosophy, different languages and much more. But the Great Serpent repeatedly ended up destroying his hut while rolling and stretching around. Jormungandr says if she can't keep Diaria safe, he has to leave her then. Scaring, it inspired Diaria to make a strong house for him to keep it safe from the Great Serpent's activities. Learning about architecture and materials that can withstand cold, he finally makes a home. Excited, he calls Jormungandr to look at his new house, but she slams her tail accidentally on the house, breaking it again. The three witches come to his aid, and he picks up materials to make a house on top of Jormungandr's head, impressing her. Many decades later, after his tenure as the new Dark Lord is forgotten, he comes across a big black dragon. 
Diaria continues his story, when the Black Dragon comes to him as he is looking for the Demon Lord. He introduces himself as Varney, but Diaria remains unchanged. Varney angrily reacts to his calm demeanor, says he wants to be his acquaintance and should show some gratitude. Diaria plans to get rid of the dragon, denying that he is the Demon Lord. Much to his confusion, the dragon says he doesn't see much difference between humans and elves. He says the Dark Lord's agency sent him, and he needs Diaria's help with something. Diaria says he has heard of Varney and asks if he is the famous Mighty Dark Dragon. Varney confirms he is indeed the Mighty Dark Dragon, and needs help with the property. Diaria denies his request that he can't build him a home, which annoys the dragon, and he cries. But Jormungand arrives, encouraging Diaria to build the dragon a home. They visit a hero guild fortress, which Varney wants to take away from the heroes. Diaria says if he wants to just attack the heroes, he doesn't need his help and tries to walk away. But Varney says he needs his magic to help him, and if he doesn't, he will tell Jormungander that Diaria didn't help, and disobeyed her orders. Diaria reluctantly agrees to help. They both barge inside the fortress and scare the heroes inside and Varney attempts to kill them. But they revive and attack the dragon, but Diaria with his magic defeats them. Diaria after seeing them challenging each other instead of fighting, he walks away again. But Varney addresses him as the Dark Lord, stunning the heroes. They both beat all the heroes. Diaria says now Varney can stay there, but Varney says he can't live in a house without properly inspecting the interior, especially whose doors can be broken very easily, and their house hunting begins. Diaria suggests building a new house for him, starting with testing new materials which can hold a dragon. They together attack another fortress, checking the bricks of the fortress. Diaria says the quality is poor, and they move to attack another fortress. The roof of that fortress is weak too. They attack another and so on, while Diaria is writing it down in his notebook, studying the building properties as Varney wreaks havoc on them. Diaria also learns what his potential client's special requirements could be. They notice another fortress nearby and attack it. Diaria tries to stop him, but Varney berates him, asking him to help it so that nearby non-humans can leave in peace. Enough with the insults, Diaria gets into an argument with Varney, leading them to fight, along with the heroes who attack them too. They defeat all the heroes but after fighting, Varney tells Diaria he has never seen the world outside and admits that he always longed for a safe home to raise a family, without heroes' interruption. This new understanding between them brings them closer as they both continue their house hunting journey together. He stops his story to see Pip has slept and suggests he should continue the story later and they should rest for the night. Huey and Albert, his cat, the two hunters who are responsible for stealing Letty's egg, are camping when they see Letty running away from the dwarves and learn Letty doesn't have any aggression towards fighting or flying abilities. Since then, it has become their obsession to hunt down and kill the dragon. The duo are following his trail, come to the temple but realize the dragon isn't there. So their next stoppage is the haunted mansion, for which they have to go through the forest of the dead. But Huey is scared of ghosts and decides to take a different, longer route to the haunted mansion. Later, they come across a big castle where Letty lives, but Huey says he can't intrude on someone's privacy and waits outside the castle. When the heroes sneak into the castle, the security team throws them away and says the Flame Dragon Lord is busy with his world domination plan, scaring both Huey and Albert. Huey rushes to the market and asks a lady to print a poster about Flame Dragon Lord, who is planning on world domination, inadvertently giving Letty the reputation of being a scary dragon. When they are going towards the forest, they suddenly see Letty along with the baby chick. Letty faces a bandit gang who are about to attack him, as the duo, watching from above, witness Letty fire blasting the gang. Scared, he says to his partner that they need to be stronger to attack the dragon and delay their plan for now. But it was actually Diaria who fire blasted the gang, kept out of sight by Letty's big body. Among the bandits' loot, Letty and Diaria find a kidnapped girl. As Diaria says, now the dragon is the father of another baby, angering Letty. They investigate the girl and decide to wake her up. Letty says he needs to hide first, but she wakes up before that. Letty hands Pip over to her so that she stays calm, but she screams after looking at him. She asks where she is and introduces herself as Nell, Princess of Eos. Diaria explains that it wasn't the dragon who kidnapped her, which she understands after seeing how scared Letty is of her. Diaria says they will safely return her home, but she refuses to go back and is looking for a house for herself. Diaria asks her what kind of house she is looking for and lists out her wishes, mostly a vast bath. 
Diaria offers to help her with her house hunting, leaving Letty jealous and ignored. Diaria teleports them near a cave, which he says accommodates four spacious rooms, shocking the princess. She teases Letty that he can stay with her if he serves her, angering him more. But she wasn't impressed with the interior of the cave and the bath facilities he offered. She stumbles on a rock and falls from the cliff, but Letty catches her but can't fly, making them both fall. Letty prepares a bath for her in his cooking pot, which annoys her. But she thanks him for saving her from the bandits. But suddenly, some heroes come to the spot of their camp and assume the dragon is cooking her. They draw their swords towards them, but she insults them to go away. They don't listen to her, thinking the dragon brainwashed her and prepares to take her away, but Letty protects her, standing in front of them. Diaria comes instantly and saves them, by attacking the heroes. She is impressed by Letty's courage and joins their quest of house hunting, but she still doesn't like Letty's cooking skills. Diaria is brushing Nell's hair as she loves being pampered, but she notices Letty is worried. Diaria says he is going through the property list on which they should visit next. Nell yells at him for being unable to select a location but is interrupted by a voice. Suddenly, a man comes out of the thin air and a djinn appears, saying he has come on behalf of the non-human internal revenue service. Letty faints at his sudden appearance but somehow manages to stand up. The djinn introduces himself as Nazim, who lets him know that now that Letty left his family and is independent now, he is required to turn in an annual tax report. Letty doesn't have any concept of tax, but Nell explains to him that to live, they need to pay their taxes. Nazim is stunned to see Diaria there and asks Letty if he would like to file a report. He takes Letty to the filing area and gives him paperwork to complete. He says he doesn't have any income and doesn't have a permanent address. Nell also adds that he is trying to raise a girl and a child too. But Nazim asks him to write about his side job and for his stack card. Nell looks at the card, embarrassing him about his low points. Nazim also asks him to file for the child allowance too, to receive money for both of his children, frustrating Letty even more because he doesn't consider Nell his child. He signs off his paperwork, and Nazim says to meet him once he finds his house. Both Nazim and Diaria worry about him more with more paperwork, leading him to faint again. Nell wakes him to let him know they have already done the paperwork and Pip has chosen their next destination. The next destination turns out to be a dungeon in the kingdom's capital city, also Nell's house, frustrating Nell. They all reach the dungeon, and Nell identifies it as an artificial dungeon for heroes training. Diaria explains that the dungeon needs non-humans to stay, and Letty could give an interview to stay there as a government servant. The dungeon is closed because it's a day off for the workers, so Diaria gives them a tour around the dungeon. They find the dungeon huge and meet various monsters inside. They start hearing voices which panic Letty. Nell starts exploring it for herself and accidentally gets locked inside a chamber when they pick up a stone to open a door. But Pip finds a way for them to escape. Letty sees a stair in front of them, and they crawl up to find themselves in the middle of the hall. Nell angrily shivers as she tells Letty it is the hall of the royal palace, which is also her home. They are shocked to find themselves in the middle of the hall and start panicking until the heroes arrive too. They spot the dragon and princess and start chasing them around the palace, as Letty cries for help from Diaria, who is nowhere to be found. As the heroes prepare to attack the dragon, Diaria again comes right at the moment and saves them, blowing the heroes off. The king's army is ready to fight against the dragon as they think he has kidnapped the princess. Letty says he will tell the truth to the king, but Nell says she doesn't want to go back to the king because of his insult. She remembers the day when the king ate her cupcakes, causing her to run away. She wants the king to ask for forgiveness, frustrating Letty. He suggests they can use Diaria's magic to escape, but Diaria says otherwise. He has another counterattack plan, to seal the outer gates of the castle and take down the guards with the help of Pip's screen. Then they strategies to bring the soldiers to a practice ground and brought gnomes to throw rocks from above to them. They're engaged in a fight as more soldiers move in. The king has decided he will enter the castle through a secret passage. The soldiers say they have seen the dragon, but he was being timid, which the king says the dragon is mocking them. The sun sets, and the soldiers are still marching, but the gnomes have left, covering their shift. The king arrives and demands his daughter, stating how much he loves her and the dragon can take away all the gold he wants. Letty tells Nell to retreat inside the castle and asks Diaria to help him. Inside the castle, the king notices Letty's tail and chases it, as he lures the king away from the soldiers. Through Diaria's magic, the door behind the king is locked, preventing the soldiers from getting in. Nell meets her father there, as he hugs her. He asks if the dragon has hurt her, but she says he didn't. 
The king apologizes for everything and Nell demands three cakes with whipped cream. Both Letty and Diaria are happy to see them reunited, and Diaria is glad Letty took the risk for Nell. Letty says her father reminded him of his own father. The king spots Letty inside the room and panics, but Nell asks him to calm down. He listens to everything and clears the misunderstanding. He thanks Letty for saving his daughter. Letty asks how he could escape from there as both the heroes and the king's army want to slay him. The king presents Letty some fairy dust to fly away. Diaria apologizes to the king for all the trouble and gives him a list of things which need maintenance inside the castle. Nell gives Letty a fairy stone so that they can be in touch and bids farewell. Letty uses the fairy powder and tries to believe in himself he can fly, and soon finds himself floating. He thanks Nell and the king for the gifts and leaves with Diaria. Letty says this isn't the first time he has been flying and remembers him sitting on his father's back flying. Letty says the world is an amusing place, to which Diaria laughs, remembering he said the same thing on his journey with Varney as they continue their home hunting journey. Meanwhile, Nell reads how the flame dragon lord's attack on the castle went down, but some information is slightly changed for royal amusement. Even though their adventure in the world of anime has ended for now, they are still looking for a house in the manga universe. Letty is training hard. Diaria is curious and asks why Letty is training so hard. Letty says he wants to be like Varney, but Diaria says he can't become like him, upsetting Letty. Listening to Varney's story from Diaria has inspired him to become a dragon like him. He is training hard, but that isn't helping him, but Diaria comforts him, saying he doesn't need to be someone like Varney. Letty asks him about his next property visit. Diaria says before moving on to the next visit, he would like to discuss something. But before he could do it, they heard a friendly voice approaching him. They see it's Nell, much to their surprise. She found them with the fairy stones she gave to Letty. She comes towards him with her open arms, and Letty thinks she is coming to hug him, but she instead hugs Pip. Letty asks if she forgot something, but Nell asks him to act happier as they are reuniting. Diaria is concerned if she ran away from her palace again, but she explains that when her mother heard about the previous events, she asked her to thank Letty properly again and she will be sending her realtor to help find Letty a home. Nell came to warn them about the new realtor, but Diaria says it's the best opportunity for him to come. Diaria comes back to his important discussion and says that he will be leaving for a housing exhibition that week and learning more about new construction techniques. But now that a new realtor is arriving, he can leave peacefully for a week and Letty can continue his house hunting. He bids goodbye and vanishes. Nell asks Letty to follow her as they visit a castle the house of Skiina. Letty asks if the realtor would meet them there, and he is nervous to meet another realtor except Diaria for the first time. Nell explains that her mother met this non-human realtor on one of her travels. Letty asks if she has come alone all the way to meet him, but she says she is under guard and points out towards the guards very far away, who are scared of the flame dragon lord. Letty realizes that if anything goes wrong, he is the one who has to save her. Suddenly, Letty and Pip are frightened to see a bat upside down appear in front of them, apologizing for keeping them waiting. He apologizes again for scaring him and introduces himself as Victor, a vampire, and the real estate realtor they were supposed to meet. He says he is glad to help the flame dragon lord and the princess. Nell asks if he is really a vampire, as according to her belief, vampires are supposed to be beautiful. The bat explains that is their transformed appearance when they pray and to satisfy the princess, he turns himself into a handsome-looking man, impressing Letty and Nell. Victor leads them to the castle, as he explains that this property is older, as Letty points at a huge crack on the side of the walls. But Victor says it's a design to give the house a rustic charm, confusing Letty. Victor leads them to the bedroom but transforms back into the bat as his illusion's time has ended. He explains that, due to a curse on him, he can only transform for three minutes. To break the curse, he needs a kiss from a pure maiden and leans forward to kiss her. Letty, shocked, rushes towards Nell to protect her, but is astounded to see Nell punch the vampire far away with her knuckles. Nell says she has learned self-defense, and since Diaria isn't around, she will protect herself and Letty. Letty wonders why he is even alive to hear that. Victor, meanwhile, somehow manages to stand up apologizes, and says he was merely joking, but Nell warns him she will put a stake in him if he tries anything like that. They continue their house tour as Letty notices the floor is uneven. 
he brings out a marble to test it, and the floor actually turns out to be sloped. Victor again gives the explanation that it's a design to collect the trash in one corner. To all the defects Letty finds in the home, like a closed door or hole in the ceiling, Victor says it's all designed, frustrating Letty. Letty asks Nell if they can even trust the new realtor, and they hear some noises in another room. They find three cat-like creatures gnawing on the wall, and Nell asks Victor if they are a part of the design too. He says they are rare species, so the landlord did a favor and asked them to stay there. But she says they are too sweet and sometimes gnaw the walls. But Nell is angry and demands to talk to the landlord. Suddenly they realize they are moving too, as the castle is actually located above the landlord, who is a giant ox-like creature, Humbaba. Victor explains that the house is perfect for him, as the heroes can't pinpoint his location, and offers him to sign a lease so he could stay there rent-free for three months. But Letty refuses his offer, saying he didn't find the house a good match for him. They want to get off the castle, but Victor says they can't get out until the landlord finishes his walk. Two hours later, after getting motion sickness, they say goodbye to Victor and plan to wait for Diaria to come back. But Victor says he will help them the next day too, as per the Queen's order. Victor will help them until Letty finds a suitable home, scaring him more as Nell apologizes to Letty, feeling bad for him, and Letty cries for Diaria. Far away, the guards discuss that Nell is scary and might have brainwashed the dragon. Along with Victor, much to their irritation, Letty, Nell and Pip start their house hunting journey again. Letty is curious and asks Victor if sunlight is a vampire's weakness, but Victor clarifies that the weakness varies from one vampire to another. Nell asks about silver and holy water, but Victor says he wears silver and drinks holy water. He even offers Letty to buy some holy water from him, but Nell realizes it's a scam. Nell says whatever she has heard about vampires turned out to be fake, similar to her ideas about dragons too. Letty says he hasn't seen all of him and is training himself to be the fearsome dragon. Victor is ready for another property visit, as Letty wonders if he sticks with Victor too long, and he might end up signing a lease, and Victor isn't letting him go until he buys a house from him. But Nell comforts him, saying that because her mother sent him, she can't do anything but when Diaria comes back he will throw Victor away. They ask about the next property to Victor, which he describes as a detached house, and doesn't have any cracks. Letty has a bad feeling about this one too. They see a large, beautiful palace, which reminds Nell of her own palace. Letty asks if the owner isn't just sleeping below them like the previous one, but Victor says the owner has moved out. They get inside and notice something out of the ordinary. The stairs don't lead anywhere. Again, to which Victor says it's a design. The doors don't lead anywhere either. Victor says the house has gone through numerous renovations and to trap the heroes, the house is designed that way and comes along with a dungeon. Letty is worried if he gets lost too. Victor turns his appearance again to the handsome man to convince Nell to buy the house. But soon they notice a toilet right in the middle of the hall room. Victor explains that it's for emergency use. Nell notices the bathtub outside the house, which Victor calls an open-air bath. Pip roams around and accidentally opens a door to see some skeletons fall, and Victor explains that they belong to the heroes who got lost inside. Nell asks how he found such a bizarre building for them, and soon realizes they are floating. Victor explains that the mean building and annex are connected by a teleportable door, and Nell asks him why the house has so many extensions. Victor narrates an old tale about the house where the merchant who built the house accidentally awakened an evil spirit. The merchant went missing, and the house has gone through many renovations to escape the evil spirit, terrifying Letty. He moves forward to see other rooms, and turns around to see everyone missing. He is terrified even more and calls for them, but doesn't get any response. He wonders if the evil spirit has come for him too, and reminds himself of what Varney would have done if he had been in his place. He hears Pip calling for him behind a door, and rushes towards the door, but it was already opened, so he just falls inside the room, rolling. He sees Nell, Pip and Victor waiting for him as they are testing him, checking if he has gotten any better. Letty asks if there's even an evil spirit, but Nell says it's all made up, and the house has so many doors because the owner had many children. Letty ends up crying, and hugs both of them, saying he really got worried about both of them. Nell, seeing this, promises she won't do anything like this ever again. 
Victor asks if he should sign the lease and buy the house and sneakily tries to take his thumbprint, but Nell kicks him, saying he won't buy the house. After getting out of the house, Nell asks all the questions she has about vampires, and Victor refutes most of them, instead of one. A stake in the heart would kill anyone. Victor says that the property they will be seeing that day is quite vibrant, and Letty will be pleased, to which Letty says it's pretty much doubtful. Meanwhile, the heroes, who have been in a quarrel with Letty and Diaria, wake up in a church, wondering when they died again. The group's archer, Brett, asks everyone to calm down as their leader, Eric, is feeling sleepy. Finally, everyone is awake, and Eric asks why they died. The group's mage, Finn, says what she remembers is the last time they were attacked by the group of caterpillars. The group's thief, Mia, also remembers the incident of how caterpillars came raining down, and they got poisoned. After some argument, Eric remembers their mission, which is to kill the flame dragon lord and bring peace to the world. The group is quite doubtful that it would be another suicide mission, but Eric is confident that it would get him more achievement points. The mage says that to achieve something like that, they need a base of operations where they can stay in one place and fundraise to get themselves more gear. But before that, they need to pay their resurrection fee to the church priest. They move away from the church after paying their fee and look for some property to make it their headquarters, but they don't find any as Eric is sure it's the Dark Lord plotting against him. They have run out of money and Eric sells his sword on the market. With the leftover money, they buy bread a shoe. Everyone tells him that selling his only weapon was a mistake, but he is adamant that he will turn his stick into a holy sword. But they still need to figure out their knights and fee, to which Eric says they could sell the valuables they got earlier, but Brett says that if they sell those, they can't get any appraisal. Eric says they need a side quest to get some money, but is interrupted as Mia brings news to them that a popular circus has been set up and a group of bands is planning on robbing it. It is their job to save the circus, and Brett prepares that team, but Eric has some other plans, which are to attack the bandits after they have stolen it from the circus and take it for themselves. At night, everyone is enjoying the circus as they locate the group of bandits behind the circus tent. But before the bandits can make a move, they are easily defeated by the circus troupe, which are actually the monsters from the gladiator arena. Eric thinks that the circus has hired monster bodyguards, and the circus trope is actually the Dark Lord's spies. He makes a plan to defeat the Dark Lord's spies. They sneakily move inside the circus tent and find traps inside. They move in and see a treasure chest. Against his team's warning, Eric callously opens it and, along with his team, falls inside a pit. They fall and suddenly find themselves in the middle of the circus. They are forcefully taken by the monsters, who make them play flaming loops, trapeze, knife throwing, and acrobatics in their circus. After their act is over, the heroes are badly thrashed. But they receive the show's fees and the Orobot tell Eric that if he needs cash next time, they could just join them. They leave with the cash and back at their inn. Eric feels humiliated to get a headquarters and get paid by the Dark Lord's spies. But Brett says, thanks to the money, they could afford food and beds for themselves. As they are talking, Eric eavesdrops on some people who are discussing the Sword of Sage, how its single slash would kill the Dark Lord, and that it's located in the Sacred Mountain to the west. Now Eric has a new mission, which is to get the cheat code sword and slay both the Dark Lord and the Dragon, getting back their glory. Unbeknownst to them, Letty and Nell are just underneath them, and they come to see a property with Victor. Letty doesn't like the fact there's a loud restaurant just above him, which only allows humans, thus rejecting this property too. It thunders and rains as Letty hides himself under a blanket. Nell asks him if he has turned into a turtle or snail, and Letty says he is scared of lightning. Nell yells at him for being scared and not being strong enough like he promised. She tells him they need to head to their next property before it rains heavily. Victor, all of a sudden, congratulates Letty and asks him before moving what his requirements are, stunning Letty as he asked him that question so late. Victor says that as he has shown three properties and doesn't like any, he might know the requirements before they move. Nell says next time he should ask that first. Letty says he wants a cozy, family-friendly property, but Victor interrupts him, saying Letty should just say he wants a roof. Letty thinks that he never made a list like that, and all he wants is a family-friendly house for Pip, especially one with lots of storage. Nell adds one without cracks on the walls, a sloppy floor, unnecessary stairs and doors, 
irritating Victor. It starts to rain heavily as the trio reaches their next destination, the flooded Crypt Temple. Nell says the place looks like a dungeon, and Victor says it's a newly constructed property, made in an underground style. Letty says it looks pretty old to him, but Victor again says it's by design. Frustrated, they move inside to see a large hall. Letty wonders if it has any more hero traps, but Victor glorifies him, saying he doesn't need any traps to save himself. Letty thinks about getting himself some workout equipment to get fit, but Nell says before he is even ripped, he will become a trophy for the heroes. Victor, before they could ask anything, puts on a raincoat and says it's part of the design too. It doesn't have a waterproof roof so that one could enjoy natural showers, Letty says the builders were just lazy. Nell angrily bursts out on Victor and says that he couldn't show them one single better house, even after listening to their requirements and making her embarrassed because her mother recommended him. But Victor says they never said anything about waterproofing. Letty says then he would add that to his list of requirements then, and they move out of there quickly. Their next property visit is the volcanic cave of Kalar. Victor suggests that Letty doesn't like chilly water, so he brought them to a warm property. But Letty points out that Pip can't live there. Victor says he is well aware of that, and thinks that when Pip flies away to his own nest, he should have one or two holiday villas. Nell says they haven't decided on the main house yet, so thinking about the second one is rushed. But Letty is crying, thinking about when Pip will fly away on his own. Nell gets angry at him too. Letty asks Nell if she is alright inside the cave. She replies that the cloak she is wearing is heat and cold proof, which cost her one million, leaving Letty stunned. Nell asks him if he is alright, to which he says he is fine as this is a workout for him too. Victor says the owner of the cave is Fire Giant Surter, who lives in the magma below the cave. If any hero enters the cave, he will burn them. Letty likes the cave except for the heat, but Nell warns him not to trust Victor. Suddenly, they see a splash of liquid fire coming towards them, leaving them confused. Victor asks them to evacuate immediately, as a large splash of lava is about to drown them. In the nick of time, they come out of the cave, exhausted and wondering what that was. Victor clarifies that whenever Surtur sneezes or coughs, he causes a few volcanic eruptions, but nothing like a rain leak. Nell yells at him, saying it's worse than a rain leak. Victor says a little bathing in lava isn't anything for Letty, but Nell says it would have turned Letty into a Pompeii fossil. Letty tells Victor to add lava proof to the list of his requirements. They move to their next property, the Silva Temple. Victor says this house is based on temple style and was made three years ago, but Letty wonders what is going to leak this time. They get inside and see it's full of overgrown trees. But Victor says it's by the design, and so much green will purify the air. Nell notices some dryads on the tree, but Victor says they influence the life force of the plants. Letty understands this new property leaks trees. Victor says it's perfect for Letty to stay there as it's family-friendly, and is crime-prevented. Nell asks what's crime prevention, to which Victor describes that when the intruders are lured by the smell of the flower, they will be grabbed by the roots and won't be left until they die. Meanwhile, Letty too is attracted by those flowers and is grabbed by the tree, hanging him upside down. Nell rushes to his help, but he says he can manage and causes a small fire on the tree. But Nell points out that he would burn before the roots, causing him to panic even more. Nell and Victor started looking for water, but couldn't find any. Pip through his mouth throws ice on Letty, causing him to freeze. Sometime later, Letty awakens and finds himself fine. Nell says they asked Dryads to help them along with the ogres who defrosted him. Letty hugs Pip, thanking him. Nell says he is so annoying sometimes, and he says he would be stronger just like the Black Dragon. Nell is tired of listening to him becoming stronger, and says he could never become someone like the legendary Black Dragon. But she likes the way he is. Even though he can't fly or breathe fire properly, he cares for them and is kind and sweet like no other dragon. Letty gets emotional and thanks Nell for her kind words, but she says she does think he needs to get a little stronger. Victor arrives and says he is glad Letty is awake and asks about the house, but Letty says he won't take it. He says he has only one requirement, that is being safe and well defended. He also explains that even though he is called the Great Flame Dragon Lord, he knows he is a weak dragon and he must get a house which is safe for him. Victor, thinking they are teasing him, 
changes his appearance again and says if that's what Letty wants, he would take him to a place of hero proof, the place where the Sword of Legends rests, the Sacred Mountain. While Letty, Nell, Pip and Victor are on their way to the Sacred Mountain, Diaria is still at the exhibition. It's his last day and suddenly he meets the three witches again. They ask him if the Red Dragon is with him, but he says he can't bring an outsider to an industry event. He asks what the witches are doing there. They say they are both buying and selling products. Diaria tries to walk away, but they stop him, says he is looking a bit aimless, and offers to give him a map and get a checklist of fandoms and stalls he would like to visit. He replies they are just describing a Comic Con event, but they insist Diaria visit their stall. They amuse him with a new product, a wooden door harvested from a magical tree. The door growls at Diaria, but the ladies say to ignore it, and they would put a wallpaper to cover its face. They also offer him anti-hero products, such as a treasure chest which would release insects on the intruders. Diaria likes the product for Letty and buys it. He visits some more stalls in the exhibition and enters a maze design contest. There he meets a dwarf, his old acquaintance. They both constructed a temple together before and the dwarf has taken part in that contest. They chat for a while, as Diaria admires his work. The dwarf notices the witches and wonders why they are still alive, annoying him. When Diaria asks him why he is mad at those three ladies, the dwarf explains that they trapped him. Diaria is eager to know how and the dwarf explains that three cronies turned themselves into beautiful women and invited him to a drink and got him wasted. As soon as he lost his senses, they stole his blueprints and sold it to a rival company. Diaria, after finding no place to sit, goes to the dwarf's stall. The dwarf likes the door Diaria has bought, as the dwarf says he is into recycling products now. Diaria explains that the door is used from a house of a haunted spirit, so anyone who tries to pass it will get cursed. Dwarf remarks that he is using the spirit's grudges to trap heroes and doesn't believe it would work. He opens the trap door to check it for himself. After investigating some more, he says the door isn't that good because Diaria only learnt from instruction manuals and the dwarf has lived his life going through all the trap doors. He starts refining it a little. Diaria says it's the habit of being perverse that got the dwarf exiled, but he refutes him, saying he exiled on his own will. The dwarf continues to say that he has got some petrified heroes at his office, but Diaria says it isn't wise to recycle them. Diaria requests the dwarf to put a stone on the door, which is actually a stone he took away from his own statue at the Dark Lord's castle. Diaria says he will leave now as his client is waiting for him. The dwarf asks him what kind of a realtor he is that left his client to come to an expo, but Diaria says another realtor is showing him some properties meanwhile. Dwarf is curious as to how he would know about his client's whereabouts, as Diaria asks a passing bee creature if he has seen a red dragon nearby. The creature says he has last seen him near the house of Skiina, and he bids farewell to the dwarf. He wonders if Letty is okay, and follows his trail to find him at the sacred mountain. He moves upward the mountains, wondering if Letty isn't dragged into any sort of adventure. Meanwhile, Letty and Nell are facing off against the heroes. But actually the heroes have tied up Victor and are ready to kill him. Letty asks them to stop and calm down, but Nell yells at Victor and abuses him. But they are interrupted by Diaria. Letty, excited to see Diaria, hugs him. Diaria is still confused over what's happening as Eric says he would slay the Dark Lord too and make the mountain his tomb. But Nell asks to shut up as things have got complicated. Diaria asks again, and everyone together tries to explain what's happening to Diaria, confusing him more. Diaria requests any one of them to explain, and Letty says that Victor somehow tricked Letty into buying the whole sacred mountain. Before meeting Diaria, Victor takes them to the sacred mountain. They love the view of the mountain as Victor shows them the interior of the mountain he will be living in, saying the construction has been done recently. The property is also hero-proof, and while showing them, he holds them inside a cage. Letty is amused by the trap, but soon realizes he has been trapped inside along with Nell. Victor laughs that he didn't think the great flame dragon lord would fall for his trap, and says he won't let him out until he signs the purchase agreement. Nell yells at him calling it absurd but he accepts that he is a crooked predatory businessman who persuades people to buy his faulty houses. Nell says it's just a fancy way to describe extortion. He asks if they would sign it, but Letty refuses. 
He says then he has no other option but to bring out his ultimate weapon, his customer survey report. When he asked Letty to agree to their contract, he signed but Victor secretly kept the carbon below the papers to get his signature. Feeling cheated, Letty asks if it's even legal, but Victor says he knows loopholes in the system and can make it legal. He leaves, leaving them trapped there. Letty ends up crying as Nell says not to worry because as soon as Diaria shows up, he will handle the problem. Suddenly, they see someone appearing and think it's Diaria, but it turns out to be the heroes. Eric says now is his perfect opportunity to slay the dragon, but Nell stops him and says she has brainwashed the dragon for now, and he is under her control. Eric believes her and spares him. They help them get out from the trap and start walking to get off the mountain. But Nell realizes that the heroes show that they are brave, but actually they are a bunch of numb heads. Soon the heroes see Victor getting away, but he laughs at them, saying that they forgot the mountain is hero-proof. Soon the heroes start to fall under some traps, but Victor too falls under one. Eric and his team manage to stand up and get a hold of Victory. As Diaria listens to all of this, Eric is ready to kill Victor as he imprisoned the princess, but Diaria throws them away while thanking them for their assistance. He asks Victor why he did that. Victor remorsefully says he needed money. Letty says he doesn't look remorseful, but Diaria says he will take him to the Ministry of Security who will investigate his motives. Sometime later, the heroes wake up from being thrown away, and Eric curses the Dark Lord. He notices the holy sword in front of him, for which he came.